Hello, hello, young one. What are you, why are you so happy? Because we're talking about anaerobic today. Yay! What is anaerobic? I don't know. You're a grandpa, so you should know. What is anaerobic? I have no clue. Hey guys, good day. Uh, welcome to this uh, episode three uh, of this fermenty experiment the uh, video series. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, anaerobic and semi-anaerobic in this episode. As explained in an early episode, fermentation is a metabolic process which changes the biocompound composition of the coffee cherry. So this fermentation process most probably already starts on the tree when the saturation of the sugars and the water content in the cherry reaches a certain point and the ripeness stage is achieved, this will trigger uh, the imminent process of decay and with it fermentation. A key indicator is certainly the change in color to the saturation of the anthocyanins in the cherry, which can also be found in grapes, for example. This is what changes the color. The change modifies the light penetration within the cherry and therefore also the growth of the microorganism within. For them it triggers a certain kind of event knowing that fermentation is starting. Uh, from there on they will start consuming those carbohydrates into the energy that they need. In the coffee farms uh, the cup cherry fermentation might already be initiated even though the ripeness is not met yet and even though this might result in different kind of uh, fermentations in the end if you pick unripe and semi-ripe or overripe and you put it all together it's going to create different kind of fermentation process in the fermentation tank or wherever you would put it. Anaerobic fermentation. What is anaerobic? Let's check. Hmm. Something in absence of oxygen. Uh, okay. And fermentation? is an enzymatically controlled anaerobic breakdown of an energy rich compound. Hmm. So fermentation is already anaerobic. Well, I guess that's it for this episode. For the remainder of this episode, you can go watch this random video clip. Bye. So yeah, it's a little bit weird saying anaerobic fermentation is a little bit double because fermentation is always anaerobic in the strict meaning so then the dilemma becomes do we talk about the strict scientific meaning or are we going to try to decipher what we in the coffee industry talk about when we say anaerobic i think it's also a good point and one that we can use one that is used in the food industry which is a little bit broader and that is just saying that it's an enzymatically controlled process of breaking down uh, organic compounds. With this in mind, knowing that anaerobic, the term, does not really correlate with the specific scientific literature, we can tell that for us, what it means for us, is that we try to deprive the coffee from oxygen as much as possible. So we do this process by putting the whole cherries in a vessel, in a barrel for example, and gravity and maybe the handling of the cherries will cause that some of the cherries will burst a little bit or like especially on the bottom of course because of the gravity the cherries will become uh, split open a little bit and then the yeast that are already present on the skin will cause the fermentation process to already start and in this process it will release a lot of carbon dioxide and the more and more that is built up, it pushes out the oxygen in the barrel, creating, in the end, an anaerobic environment for all the cherries. Usually what you will be using in, in a barrel like that is, is a little water lock that will have like this, maybe you've seen it before a little bit there. Um, and what this does is once the, um, the, the gas starts building up, going higher and higher because it's heavier, it will push the oxygen through the water lock out uh, and fill up the entire barrel with just gas.
when we call some of the coffees on our offer is semi anaerobic it basically means that, the, that we wanted to create an anaerobic process with the producers but maybe their equipment couldn't uh, make an entirely anaerobic environment and therefore we for example use polypropylene bags which are not 100 percent airtight but they do create a very oxygen poor environment And the result will be kind of the same. So super funky, these banana um, lactic notes, super beautiful, super funky, my jam. If you create a one box or one bag coffee from a producer, it's not necessarily very sustainable. It's all about creating value for the producer. So to make sure that the recipe is actually quite re relatively easily replicated, but also making sure that it's uh, easily scaled up because it is nice that we can pay a very high cost for a one box coffee. It was highly experimental and that you pay a hundred dollars a kilo for but what is really going to create value is if you cater a recipe that can be scaled up up to maybe 50 bags or 100 bags and where we pay instead of the nine to twelve dollars per kilo you would pay for a normal coffee you pay 14 to 16. even though it looks like a small gap that will create so much more value for the producer so in our view we want to be in the field with the producer, making sure that that they are actually ready to make a coffee, that they have the right setup, uh, and that they get the right price for the coffee. So thank you for watching once again. To this episode i hope you uh, learned a little bit about anaerobic and semi-anaerobic um, see you in the next episode